It is my great pleasure uh, to introduce Lorna Byrne. Lorna is not only a best-selling author of many books. The first I had, Angels in My Hair. Uh, this one I have been inhaling the past week or so, a message of hope from the angels, uh, an international bestseller. But all of her books are, you read them like that because they hit you right in the heart. Lorna, thank you so much for being a part of this conversation today. Well, um, all I can say is welcome to you and thank you very much for having me on, on your show. And and I see the book you're reading, you know, a message of hope from the angels. And just at the moment, you feel the world needs that, you know, that that message of, of hope because of just the way everything is in the world at, at the moment. But yes. let me say, people not to feel so down. We will get through this. Thank we you. are we are resilient and, and we will do that. And God and the angels tell me that will happen. Yeah. I just, what would you say? The angels are working very hard and, and some of us kind of are hurt so much. So we lash back and it's to try and not to lash back. It's trying to, I would often say to someone, you know, just stop for a moment, take a deep breath and, love yourself and love them regardless of what's happening. It's so so true. And I, I'm glad you said that because as people are feeling this divide and the pain, you write a lot about the different angels. And for those who don't know, Lorna has been able to not just feel the angels, but see them from a very young age since you were a child. And as you see these angels, I want to bring forth a story that I'm remembering from your book about a soldier who was feeling so beaten and 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 had lost every, uh, I guess, inspiration to live. And what the angels were doing was whispering and shoring him up, uh, giving him memories and feelings of his family and all the love he had for his family. So how an angel can help is through thoughts and inspiration. And what you see is light and energy going into them from the angelic realm. We all have guardian angels, but there are also other angels at work here as well. So explain a little bit about that, Lorna, from what you see as these angels, sometimes angels of hope. There are so many other categories. Yeah, like, but what do you see? Is, yeah, there is so many. I wouldn't call them different angels in, in a sense, but... They have told me I have to do this for mankind, you know, because you'll get confused altogether. Angels are angels. But the angel of hope is an incredible angel. And I know that angel of hope is working really, really hard to inspire us and to give us encouragement and for us to, you know, just like that soldier, you know, to see his family and in his mind, you know, the whispers to give him the courage to keep crawling through that mud till he got to safety in that in that way because he was meant to live mm -hmm. you know but it was up to him as well we always have that free will and that choice he could have kind of given up and stayed in the mud right. and no matter what the angels would have said to him you know wouldn't have saved his life if if he wasn't going to make the effort as well so the angel of hope it's this incredible angel. I just love the angel of hope. Mm -hmm. He is enormous. And yet he can be in proportion with a human being as well. Yeah. And the one thing I love about the angel of hope is just the way it's dressed, you know, covered from head to toe, toe all over. But the incredible thing is this enormous torch this angel holds. And that's the light. It's, yeah. it's the... The torch is the light and it's it's giving the whole world encouragement, you know, just like the soldier. Come, keep coming, keep coming, you know, don't don't give up. But I love the way the angel of hope, I would see him many times. It's the way he turns. Mm -hmm. And if you can imagine him dressed in, in that way, he's always dressed the same way. And with this torch and even when he's in proportion with the human being, it's this gentleness of the way he he turns, his head slightly goes down and, and he turns and he's beckoning the person to keep coming, you know. And it's just incredible to see. And 
I know I'm not even giving it justice, you know, well, in the way I'm describing it. I can feel it. No, it's, it's even when reading the descriptions of the different angels, I would get goosebumps. And you talk about even the angel of, and, and feeling the healing of grace, rather, when people are yeah. healing with that uh, grace that you learned from very, very young age, when you learned about praying and, and healing that taught you to feel it in your soul. It's a different thing from just saying the words, even seeing the images. But when you feel it in your soul, it's kind of hard to put into words, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's very hard. I'm always um, searching for words. And I, I just love, you know, the healing angels, you know, and just seeing them coming around a man, woman or child or a group of people, you know, and it's like, you know, as if they're laying their hand, hands upon the person, but seeing the energy then coming down, I would say from the heavens, because that's the only way I can explain mm -hmm. that, that life that is, is coming and passing through them and then to the human being, mm -hmm. you know, and again, that's to help our human body to heal, but to help, what would I say, the person to fight to get better. You know, I always say we have to play our part as well. That's one we have thing. to show up. Yes, we have to yes. do something too. We, yes, we do. That's one thing the angels have always taught me. And I'm still learning. Yeah. Learning well, never ends. You ne And you admit you're human. I mean, you have, to, you have moments too of feeling down and the angels will try to make you laugh because that is a way to instantly raise your vibration. You tell a great story about like, nope. And they were trying to make you laugh and trying to make you laugh. And then they still show up to have someone else come in, you know, an 80 year old's birthday and he's going to make you laugh. And, and yeah. So if they don't succeed, they will find somebody, a cast member, if you will, <laughs> to play the part to make you laugh. Right. Yeah, they're, they're always, as I, I would always say, you know, the angels and even the souls of loved ones as well can be whispering in your ear, giving you a scent of smell, you know, to help you maybe to cheer somebody else up, yeah. to help you in, in a sense to, you know, look in another direction because there's someone there feeling sad and you're to smile, mm -hmm. you know, it's like your, your energy is going to them. You know, that healing energy, that 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 light. So the angels are always encouraging us to help others. But we have to help ourselves as well. Well, you you when you were writing about that yesterday, my mother called me and gave me this sort of pat on the back, like an attaboy out of nowhere. And I was feeling really tired. I was feeling really overworked and I I, my son is uh, applying to colleges and we're trying to write this essay and it's a lot of work. And, and I had so many things to do. And I was feeling like the expression we have here is like the air was out of my tires. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my mother calls me up out of nowhere and just gives me this pep talk, which is not her usual. I mean, I, I can say that it's not our usual dynamic. And when I was reading in your book about how angels will use people like her guardian angel, my guardian angel went to her guardian angel and said, hey, pump her up a little bit. She needs something. And that's how they work. They communicate with each other to then inspire us with thoughts to communicate with another who needs it. Right. Yeah, they they pass on. It's it's like how would I say it has happened before you even thought of it. Or before the situation even happened in that in that way that your mom's guardian angel was already so aware and already working on your mom probably for days or even weeks and you weren't aware of it right. you know, in that way for her to to respond mm -hmm. to feel oh I have to ring my daughter I have to give her encouragement confidence that pet pep talk as as you call it so so she did it and it wasn't that your guardian angel left you to go to your mom's guardian angel your guardian angel never leaves you not even for a second okay and and that's hard to understand how that can happen if if just let's say your mom was a million miles away but it's these these are creatures that have such a communication that we don't understand it, not even myself at times. Sometimes I think I do, and other times I say, no, I didn't get it at all. 
mm-hmm. in that in that way how they can communicate in such a, a positive and strong way but we have to respond mm-hmm. as well like many a time somebody just just say your mom just said ah those silly thoughts coming into my head. My daughter doesn't need my encouragement, my help at all. And she didn't do it. Mm. Yeah, so no. many instances you write about that with the parenting job being the most important job, even if it's not blood, if it's adopted, you having some sort of influence. And you talk about your daughter too, Megan having influence from outside sources, any mentor that comes into our life or our children's lives, but that parenting role is so vitally important. It is the most important job we have, not the job with the title and the salary and the money, the job as the parent to be responsible for this life. And just saying those words of, I love you, you matter, I see you. You talk about that mother and daughter and how the daughter and all the angels around them and the the mother's angel was trying to whisper in her ears, Right. And she wasn't listening, but then eventually she orders a piece of cake and some tea and you hear them laughing and you know that the energy shifted. You know that there was an exchange. And those are the little moments that we discount and don't realize how important they really are. Yeah, they're they're extremely important. And, you know, being a parent, I'm always saying to everyone, it's the most important job in the world. It's not being the president of a, of a country. Mm-hmm. you know, or having a huge job and your wages. It's that relationship. It's 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 being a parent. It's, you know, you've been given this child and you're meant to mold and shape it as you were mold and shaped, you know, to be a better person than your than your parents. Right. You know, and doing, doing better than them. <laughs> I have to do better than them. It's it's like, you know, you 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 probably think of mistakes your parents made or or and and you say to yourself when you grow grow up well if I ever have a child I'm not going to do that right. or I'm not going to say those things to my child because those things hurt me as a child they they tore me apart you know so the next parent wants to do better in that in that way and that's um I I just love the way when sometimes I watch, you know, the angels work and I could tell you many stories of even young people coming to me and they telling me, you know, I hate my mom and dad, you know, they say that and and I would ask them why. And they would tell me, you know, well, they don't let me do this or let me do that, or they deprived me of this or deprived me of that. And I would say to them, they did those things because they loved you, by the way. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I would explain the love within why you didn't get that or why you were deprived of that mm-hmm. or why you weren't allowed to go to something. You know, so I I would explain the love that your parents have. You know, they're just rules they're putting down to protect you, not right. to keep you a prisoner or to, you know, lock you up. There are just rules to to protect you when you going off somewhere and your mom says you have to ring at nine o'clock. Right. But that's so she knows where you are. That's actually to protect you. And I, I met a young girl who um, told me the story of, you know, her mom was very strict. Her parents, you know, anytime she went out, even to meet her school friends, you know, she said, you know, oh, there would be such a hassle, Lorna. And um she came to realize that, you know, her parents did love her because one time she didn't do exactly what her parents said, you know, ring at that time, be on that taxi or in someone's house um, and something happened. And she told me it was such a frightening experience and all she could hear from all of the angels around her And our guardian angel was her mom and dad's words. Right. Mm -hmm. And she she said she clinged on to those words. You know, um, I can't remember exactly what the words were, but she said she clinged on to them. And that's how in the end she got home. You know, another young lad told me he ended up in a, you know, what do you call it? A a police station. 
Sure. You know, in in that in that way. So it's to help children to realize that the the rules that are there for them is because your parents love you and it's to protect you. I love, I would love all parents to say that to their children, right. not to say this is the rule, you know, right. and hammer the hammer in that way, you know, and um, let the child know the teenager. It's actually to protect you because we love you. Well, then there's the opposite side of those children that didn't have any yeah. boundaries and didn't yeah. have any um, influences in any positive yeah. way. And yet you write about that too. And you write about how we choose our parents to learn all of it as, as hard as that might be. I mean, your children lost their father when he, you, mm -hmm. Joe was just what, 47. I mean, that's incredibly young. And yet we choose our parents for all of it, the good and the bad, but we're never alone, as you say, because we always have a guardian angel assigned to us from the moment we're born, aren't we? Yeah, from actually beforehand. Yes, before, before we're even incarnated. And that's before, yeah, we're even conceived or or even in a sense, a, a thought in, in a man and woman's mind in, in, that, in that way. And you have already met your guardian angel, your soul has in heaven that place we call heaven mm -hmm. and it's like at the very moment of conception the soul and the guardian it happens instantly don't ask me how unless <laughs> i know it happens instantly right. and i suppose that's very important to realize that we have a guardian angel mm -hmm. you know and it's a gift from god and listen you should be hanging out of your guardian angel make it your best friend in that in that way share things with your guardian angel because it's one thing you can do with your guardian angel is that you can go through everything in your life share everything before you maybe go and talk to a parent or someone else you know have it out with them and listen to the thoughts that they give back to you in that way and i would often say you know even write a letter to your guardian angel. You know, maybe your letter is on love, maybe it's on anger, maybe it's on loss, maybe you it's on it's on hope, but but write that emotion that you feel. Yeah. In, and you know, forgiveness. Yeah, and, you write, it, it, that's a hard one, forgiveness and 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 writing that letter to help you feel the love, the unconditional love that is offered when you get out of woe is me or blame or this didn't go right. I recently had some deception happen with someone I trusted completely. And it's such a, like it takes your, it knocks the wind out of you a little bit. You kind of go, well, how could this have happened? I, I thought I knew this person. I thought, but so I had to get neutral and say, okay, help me feel that unconditional love that my guardian angel has for me. So I can get out of being so mad and taking this personally, but it's so hard, isn't it? With our head always running with these thoughts. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the time we're, we're in our head so much. And, and that's why the angels have said to me, get, you know, the person to write a letter, even of all of what you've gone through, to write it and then to read it out loud. Mm -hmm. So it's not in your head, but you're hearing it. Yeah. You yeah. know, and and it, it helps you to forgive yourself. Because I think that's the hardest part, because someone you knew, someone you trusted, how could I have let this happen? So you're asking, you know, about forgiving yourself as well, not just forgiving the person, you know. And I would always say the forgiver receives more. Mm -hmm. forgiven. You're opening the energy for that to come in. And, and you talk a lot about prayer, Lorna, and I would love to touch on this too, because some people say, well, my prayers never are answered or they must not have reached the target because it didn't happen. But so many times we can't see the big picture. I talk about the macro versus the micro and we have no idea. And I say this a lot lately, things are happening for us, not to us. And so put out the prayer and if it's for your highest good, it will work out. But we just can't see sometimes the end game, right? Yeah, most of the time, I would say 100% of the time, we, we can't see the end game, as you call it. Yeah. But if, if you're heading down a road and you feel you really want some, a particular thing, you can pray for it. 
-hmm. you know, but again, you have to play your part and you have to listen. But don't be upset if you don't get it. Just turn, mm -hmm. just turn, because, you know, I meet so many people and they tell me, thanks be to God, Lorna, I never got it, you know, because years later they realize how wrong it would have been for them to have got it because what they have now is a million times better right you know and that that's a thing a thing to remember if it doesn't work out it's okay and i know parents are always you know like myself and yourself you're praying for the best for your child you want them to get that job you want them to get all these exams and all of that but the main thing you want them to be is happy yeah. You know, the exams and the job aren't really that important in the end. It's 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 their happiness and your happiness as well. Your your peace mm -hmm. and the love that's inside you and not to forget to love you. Because right. we we have forgotten you're all everyone has been told out there in the world. It's all about materialistic things. Mm -hmm. But life is not about one material thing at all. No, you write very clearly. You can't yeah. take any of it with you. And so, and let's talk about happiness too. So many people get stuck in grief because they've had a significant loss, maybe a parent or a spouse. And and you, what you see is that they really want us to, yes, you have to feel it to heal it, but get through it so you can be in partnership. You talk about angels playing Cupid where they'll sort of whisper <laughs> in someone's ear. Talk to me about how angels play Cupid. I found that fascinating. I I find it fascinating even today because I, I see those rose, romantic angels, you know, playing a part all of the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's not that they fire, fire an, an arrow at someone, you right. know, um, they're whispering in, the, in their ear all of the time. I just see where they're trying to get a, a couple to say hello to each other, even from across the room. Like right. that just amazed me, you know, you're seeing someone over in the corner over there and someone, you know, the far side and, and you see them glancing over in that direction, you know, and sometimes the people catch, you know, that little glimpse. But a lot of the time we put our head down and we don't respond to the to the romantic angels, mm -hmm. you know, and we should we should give it a chance. And I often see them put, you know, that golden thread around a couple's wrists, you know, or, or around them all together. Um, and that is so beautiful. I always say give love a chance, even if love just lasts for a short time. You should never turn away love. Mm -hmm. Love is love. And Rosmantic love is the one love that every human being is in search of. Mm -hmm. And yet it's love. Right. You know, and I, I think in today's world, we're very judgmental of rosemantic love in the sense that we want it in a particular way. And we want that partner, you know, to suit all our needs. Right. And we check all the boxes. Early. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say do away with the boxes. Well, you, you, know? you tell a great story about this couple and you see the woman is, you know, kind of like this and the man yeah. is trying to talk and you see their angels sort of kind of going like, this is meant to be. We want to try to unravel the knots here so we can get them to not be so judgmental and to come from that heart yeah. space so they yeah. can be in communication. And, and I think that's a lovely visual of the rope and, and that the angels are trying to lasso them in union versus have them be separate, mad, upset, frustrated, and judgmental. And that's sadly to say that happens in the world and couples miss each other because they walk away. They don't give each other a chance. And I have met men and women where that has happened. And I always feel so sad for them, mm -hmm. you know, because they're they're still in search of love and, and now they're in their 60s and, and they're saying, why hasn't it happened for me? And or they're in their 70s now. And I'm being told, but it already happened. Right. But they wouldn't accept it. They threw it away. And that's why I would say, you know, if the romantic angels are trying to get you together with someone, you know, give it a chance. 
And your loved yeah. ones on the other side are there too. With the exactly, oh. they're they're trying okay. as well, you know. But us as humans think we we know better, right. you know. So we kind of push the angels away, push God away in that sense, and even push away the souls of our loved ones that are all the time giving us messages or signs as well, just like like the angels. Um. So. Anyone out there, any of your followers, I would say to them, give romantic love a chance. And to, and to give an angel a job. You talk about all these unemployed yes, angels. That yes. is the most tragic thing. Because of free will, they have to be asked, invited. And there are teacher angels, even if you're you know, trying to uh, fill out an application for work or you give so many wonderful stories of of where inspiration will come after, like you say, we have to do our part, we have to show up, but ask for that help. Ask a teacher angel to help you with that task that might feel daunting and overwhelming. They are there to help, aren't they? Yeah, the the teacher angels are absolutely incredible. I have watched them around students, even around business people. And the angels taught me a new word, um, and it has been repeated a few times around me as well by other people. That's how they help me to get the pronunciation. Uh -huh. So I'll try it. <laughs> okay. okay, let's see. Um, the angels tell me that they give people epiphanies. If I'm epiphanies. saying epiphanies, yes, very good. I'm saying right. Uh huh. And that's that random thought that comes into your mind when you have been thinking of something. You know, and that random thought a lot of the time we ignore, mm -hmm. you know, or we think, oh, that's way out there. I won't bother or I won't give her a smile or I won't give him a smile because, ah, no, you know, we say things like that. Mm -hmm. But we we shouldn't. We should try and reach out um, to love others and to love ourselves. But. I love the unemployed angels that you mentioned. From the time I was a child, you know, I named them that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I said to the angels, you know, at that time, I don't know what age I was. I was quite small. Um, what do I call them? They never have anything to do, you right. know. And, you know, I remember a time my dad had become unemployed. Mm -hmm. You know, he had no work. Yes. And um, I know I never put this story in, but I always remember my dad being so worried and so concerned and applying for jobs and going after jobs and everything like that. He was unemployed. So I started to call these beautiful angels, the unemployed angels. So that's where they got their name as well. Yeah. You know, um, and all this we have to do is ask, you know, you can ask for unemployed angels to help you. Yeah. You know, you can send unemployed angels anywhere in the world. Yes. You know, and the person doesn't have to believe in angels right. at all. You right. know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what faith they have, what religion they have. Like the world now needs lots of those unemployed angels in many parts of the world to help to give people encouragement, to keep the hope there. Um, sometimes I would watch the unemployed angel and I know I've explained it loads of times helping someone carrying a bag or watching a mother you know struggling with her children and suddenly things become a little easier and that's the unemployed angels like they do so so much for us and um, I believe that how will I say this without the angels how will I say it it's hard sometimes to put it, things in, into words, but um, without them, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's like even walking, laughing, talking. You know, you're an artist, you're painting or you're creating something or making something or you're baking. They're helping us do everything. Yeah. I have never seen anyone not doing anything you know, without the help of an angel or the guardian angel right there with them. You even write in Angels in My Hair about the being told to kind of focus on this little girl at a, at a store. It was a department store. And and one of the hangers, you know, the mother was distracted, yeah. pulling things off. And one of the hangers pulls her eye 
And, and you saw the angels basically holding the eye in place. They can't prevent disaster from happening from our distraction. Sometimes they can swoop in and these angels swooped in, kept the eye there. It was saved, you found out later, but what an incredible example of how they will. And they told you to kind of keep an eye, keep an eye. What? Why were you looking? And, and that's it. Like you say that epiphany, go here, call yeah. this person, look to your left, look down, look up, listen, we need to listen. Yeah, I, I remember that, that story. That's when I, I was um, working in pennies as a teenager. Yeah. Um, and just seeing the angel's hands, you know, go in, in and under and, and catch it. Mm -hmm. And it was it was like um, I could see the light of the angel's hand. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was sitting there like how it didn't come all out I don't know but I know it was the angel's hand mm -hmm. that saved it you know um, and it was wonderful then to hear back later um, in the shop the news oh her eye was saved she's she, everything is good but a hanger wow. so, oh like, it was oh mm -hmm. terrible I, I cringed just reading it and I thought I couldn't even imagine having been the witness to it as you were, but but that just shows what a miracle it is to have these angelic beings wanting to see us thrive and succeed and be healthy. Um, case in point, another in your in in this messages from hope, uh, messages of hope from the angels, a surgeon who didn't believe in God, let alone angels, his brother told he told you that he gave him a copy of Angels in My Hair. He, he wound up reading it, but he ended up operating on someone. There's a shard of metal and it was like a needle in a haystack. He couldn't find it to save this man. But he decided to call in his guardian angel, even though he was probably rolling his eyes, Lorna, right? Like, oh, yeah, probably so. <laughs> right? So he did. And sure enough, he felt a hand on his hand guide him to find that needle in a haystack, take it out and save the man. And, 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 and this person calls you crying. I mean, these are the these are the stories that get that give me so much hope, and I hope will continue to give others because even the skeptics cannot deny some of these stories and the reality of how they're saving people. Yeah, so that's that's like you know the young boy that I I can't give any names, but he I received a letter, mm -hmm. you know, and I had it read out, and and you knew it was a child's writing. Yeah. you know and he just thanking us and I think I put it into one of the books but he thanking us for the book angels in my hair and he said my sister read angels in my hair mm. and now that she's not in the world anymore he knows that she wasn't alone mm. when she died that her guardian angel was there with her and what comfort that gave that child you know, um, it was a very sad story. He told me what had happened, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it gave him so much comfort because his mom or his dad or somebody had angels in my hair and the two of them read it. Nice. You know, you know, one child and one very young teenager, you know, and it gave the boy so much comfort knowing that his sister's guardian angel was right there with her. And the way he put it, you know, her guardian angel reached in and took her soul and took her home to heaven. You know, it gave so, so much comfort to him, even though it was so sad. Yes, yeah, so and sad. And you can't replace the physical, you know, missing no. the physical version of them, but knowing the soul, and you talk so much about that and connecting to the soul, uh, to for those in the audience, Lorna, how do you start your day? You talk deeply about your prayer and you were raised a Christian faith, but you believe in all religions under the umbrella of God. How do you start your day and how do you end your day with your thoughts or prayers? Or if that's too personal, I understand. But if, well, if... I, 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 I suppose um, my day never ends because <laughs> even, even when I'm sleeping, I'm praying. I, I know I am. And God wakes me up lots of times during the night so I don't sleep great. Yeah. Um, I give out to God about that and the angels all <laughs> of the time. Um, but I, I thank God and the angels every single day for my life, for being alive, you know, for sitting here now talking to you, 
you know, for being out today in the rain. You know, I, I suppose the angels have taught me how to enjoy and be happy with literally everything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's cold or wet or or even if, you know, I'm a bit hungry now or thirsty. I'm I'm so grateful and so thankful for being a human being. I know I have a soul, but living in this world because yeah. there's so much beauty in this world and so much good. And I thank the angels. I thank God for showing us all of that. You know, I see so much more, you know, I see so much more in, in such an abundance of beauty and, and care and love, you know, um, and our soul is is that spark of light of God. It's it's so tiny. It's like a tiny little spark. Mm -hmm. Yes. But but yet it fills every single part of you and it's out there as well. Yeah. It's enormous so as well, but it's so tiny. Yeah. You know, because that's the way God has shown me. Right. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and to me, you know. For whenever God, the creator, you can call God whatever you like, mm -hmm. fell in love with us and gave us part of itself. Mm -hmm. To me, that's incredible because looking at the world today and, and all the pain and hurt that's going on and how we're hurting each other and in a sense destroying our planet, you know, wow, he, God wow. has a huge heart so big that he still loves us and we're doing all these horrible things despite it all and, and you talk terrible. about evil evil is real and evil takes over light workers evil takes over it can take up residence let's just put it that way and it can be impermanent it can exit and the way to always calling in the light calling in the angels calling in your god particle remembering that you're part of the divine I, I always say when you're feeling really down and you write about this too, being very depressed and, and not being motivated, it's the smallest little steps that make the big picture. Just getting up and taking a, a short walk, picturing that little light in you, just growing a little bit brighter. I, I, and I love how you talk about that. People are overthinking things and depressed and you can see the guardian angel sort of holding this little light in front and it's their inspiration and, and they help make it brighter so that they can then get a thought. And when their thought yeah. soul connects to that light, it gets even, it beams even more, doesn't it? Yeah, that that's where, you know, lots of the angels and sometimes even the soul of a loved one will hold that light of hope in front of a person. And, and it is so tiny, but yet so, so bright and um, encouraging a person to you know, see the hope in their life, the good in their life, the blessings. And even though they might be in a dark place, like I've met lots of people, all ages, even young children that would say they saw that light. I knew that light was in front of me and I reached out to grab it. Um, and I suppose maybe physically as a human being, we have to reach out to grab it. Yeah. Even even if if it's, we know it's there within our own mind, you know, to reach out and grab it, that you're grabbing it physically and you're putting it into yourself to see that light. And I've met many people that have been in that dark pit and, you know, they have said, I never thought I would make it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was given up. You know, again, I would say, I want, especially young men, you know, I could be walking down the street somewhere in the world and it's mainly young men would come up to me and they would just say, hi, Lorna, you saved my life. Mm. You wow. know, and they'd keep on walking. Mm -hmm. But the angels would tell me that they had been in a dark place. And for somehow, um, they either read angels in my hair or nowadays they saw something on YouTube and it gave them hope and it helped them to see that light that they can make it yeah. you know I've seen that happen so so many times so I would say to everyone out there you know don't dream or even think of taking your life because your life is precious yes you know you you need to live because the whole world needs you 
And if you think no one loves you, by the way, I love you. Your guardian angel loves you. God loves you. Yeah. You know, you are loved and allow yourself to feel that love. Hug yourself. Mm -hmm. Again, I've met so many people, the angels would say, Lorna, give them a hug. And sometimes I would ask the angel um, why. And I have so many times been told because they've never been hugged before mm -hmm. or they have never, the words have never been used. I love you. Yeah. You matter. You know, yeah. Yeah, we, we need to say that, but feel it as well when you're saying it to someone. Or, or you meet someone who would say, I lost, you know, a loved one. Well, I didn't realize I loved them the way I did, but I never told them I loved them. And now I'm regretting it. It's tearing me apart. So hug your friends, hug your mom, your dad, your uncle, even if you've had disagreements with them at different times give them a hug and say I love you because you need that as well as them and even I would say even if you're if that person backs away from you and says oh no 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 do you know why they're saying that they don't know how to cope with this love right you know so you hug them gently and then another time you tell them the same thing and that that happens quite a lot because they haven't been loved. Yeah. And you're the first. Imagine, just think of it. You've been the first to respond to your guardian angel, to respond to God, to say to your friend, by the way, I love you and give them a hug. Mm. Or your parents. I know I always tell the story of the interviewer on stage, um, you know, in tears beside yeah. me. And, and when everything was over, she rang her mom and she had told me I rang her because my mom had never told me, she said, that she loved me. Right. But I never told my mom either. Right. And this is a 30 year old. Mm -hmm. And she rings her mom and her mom goes silent on the phone because the mom didn't know what to do when her daughter said she loved her. Mm -hmm. She was overwhelmed by that love. You know, but I was told she had a home to her mom and they hugged each other and there was tears. That's it. So it's so important. Love is, you know, just like love and hope, compassion, forgiveness, empathy. You can't go into a supermarket and buy them or into a big shop and say, I want that off the shelf. Right. It's in you. It's yes. it's your soul. It's you loving you. It's the spiritual part of you. It's the part we're all in search of. Mm -hmm. And we're saying we can't find it. But and that's activated. Because it's you. Yes. Yes. You and know. that's what you say. We have to do our part. If it's in there, we need to remind ourselves how it functions, how it, it's working a muscle. You have to strengthen the muscle. Yes. So everyone who is watching this, here's your homework. You go out, you go and you get Lorna's books, whichever one you want. You just Google Lorna Byrne or go to LornaBurn.com, B-Y-R-N-E.com. Uh, Angels in My Hair is where I started. I just, you know, this one, there's so many options, but do that. But also to them, call someone, tell them you love them. Hug someone. I'm giving homework, Lorna. I've never done this, but this yeah, is what I'm I give started. homework all the time. <laughs> So hug someone, tell someone you love them and do an act of kindness. I love that story where you write about the gentleman helping the woman with, or was it an angel inspiring someone to help a woman who was trying to pay for her parking and, yeah. and the meter didn't take credit cards. She didn't have change. This person gave her change. When you help someone in need and others witness that, the ripple effect helps so many more other people because they will then be inspired to help another. So there we've given we've given a homework for this conversation and now yes. we, can, we can put a pause on that and say next time we'll give them more homework homework yes yeah. homework is is very important to do um but i'm afraid adults don't like doing homework no. children, <laughs> but do it you you will enjoy yeah you will i always enjoy your words but it was even more powerful for me to hear them from your mouth directly. So thank you, Lorna, for your time, for your work, for all of your stories. You heal through storytelling, which is my mission to help 
tell those stories to inspire others. So thank you for paying it forward with your work and for giving us some of your energy today. I'm so grateful. And I will continue to uh, bang the drum for all that you do and hope okay. that everyone out there does the same. It was lovely well, to be with you today. Well, I would just love to thank you for having me on your show. What a privilege. And, you know, all your listeners as well, you know, they're, they're all incredible. I want um, them to be full of love and happiness and joy. And in a sense, you know, to listen to your shows more because I know you do an awful lot. We all have to play, play our part in the world to reach out with that kindness and love and that compassion and love ourselves to give ourselves a hug. For the right. We have to give ourselves love because we can't give what we don't have. Yes. <laughs> so. yes. Exactly. exactly. You make my job so easy, Lorna. I could talk to you all day long, but we're going to say goodbye for now to everyone yes. out there. God bless. LornaBurn.com and God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.